Okay, moving on to uh, number 11, adoption of the 2016 edition of the California Building Standards Code, building regulations and ordinance. Uh, I used to have to deal a lot with these in my previous life, so kind of familiar with this. Mayor, members of the council, Arnoldo Rodriguez, Development Services Department. The item before you is the introduction of, the t um, of an update to the City of Yuba City uh, Building Code from the existing 2013 building code to the 2016 building code. So um, in the development services department, we're probably one step ahead of the fire department. They're only on the 2015 code, you know, so they're a year behind us. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> as Jim said in item 10, so the building code's also on a three-year cycle, exactly like the fire code is as well. So the existing building code was adopted in at the end of December of 2012. It went into effect of 2013. This building code cycle would be adopted, um, it would go into effect in January, and then it would be valid for, uh, for a three-year period. There are, however, a couple of modifications during that time frame, and it's generally in response to updates at the state legislation level or, or um, at the state senate level, which triggers some potential updates to the building code, and they're predominantly triggered by planning uh, uh, or zoning changes at the state level, which, um, which oftentimes then the building code has to respond. However, um, sans those changes, there are very few changes to the building code <clears throat> during that three-year period. I don't know if it's on. I know it's not on. Here we go. So the key changes are primarily to update, uh, to reflect contemporary building practices, changes in technology and building materials. And with that being said, should the city not take action on the adoption, the new code actually does go into effect at the state level. So the primary reason that we're bringing the item to you is just to make certain that our building codes at the city level reflect contemporary practices at the state level. A couple of noteworthy changes uh, from, from the building code. The maximum height for accessory buildings, again, at the state level is going to be changed from uh, um, from a two-story maximum to a three-story maximum. With that being said, though, there are local zoning laws that would still mandate in terms of setbacks and height requirements and everything else. So again, so only because something's permitted at the state level, that does not simply um, state that local land uses can be ignored. So with that being said, any project that comes before the planning department, both the building department have to review it as does the, the planning department to, to ensure that it does comply. So we can't get a three-story garage in the back, you know, and, and above your neighbor, neighborhood, correct? Correct. Um, the tiny house rule. Uh, so the minimum habitable, habitable room area requirement of 120 square feet per habitable room is going to be eliminated. And then also there is also a change that would mandate um, that new single-family homes, duplexes, and townhomes be, be built to accommodate electric vehicle charger installation stations. So and yes, through the mayor, and, yes. and on that, um, I have a, a couple of questions, and, and that is, what does it mean to be ready uh, for charger installations, and what's the power requirement uh, that, that they're setting forward on that? It has to be wired to accommodate electric vehicle charging stations. It doesn't imply that the actual charging station has to be constructed, and it is, it is a 220, and I'm looking at the chief building official, Mike Campos. Is it... A, And is that a 220 volt or is it a 115? Or, 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 or it's a 120. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. My question is on the teeny house rule. Um, it's kind of interesting uh, minimum habitable room area so they can make them smaller than that and it's habitable now. Basically, dealing with things like they've done on Marysville side for the, the tiny homes, is that one of the reasons for the accommodation of that or have um, they given anything? So, can this is actually partnered with, there are some changes that are coming down the pike for accessory dwelling units. And can one of the key things at the state level um, is that they're attempting to, to, to increase uh, densities and to allow backyard cottages, which are commonly referred to as granny flats. And can one of the things at the state level that they're attempting to do is there are, are that there are some jurisdictions primarily on the coastal communities that are um, strongly to no growth communities that, that they've attempted to circumvent 
the uh, permitting accessory dwelling units by imposing other regulations. So come what this would do, it simply eliminates um, um, uh, or minimizes uh, potential local regulations from, from superseding the state level. Okay. Um, however, as those changes are coming forward, um, staff will be sure to bring those changes to, to, the, uh, to the city council to make sure kind that is very clear to us in terms of how those changes could potentially impact Yuba City residents. I have seen online, of course, a lot of us probably have some of the um, uh, living, living independently, I'm going to say, for, um, for family members that they could bring them in temporarily, connect them up, and then, then, then they can be removed. But they're fully self-contained, mm -hmm. Title 24, everything is there to where when, it, when, when they're gone, they, they have to be removed. Correct. Unless you have another family member that is in the same situation. But uh, um, some of them are absolutely beautiful. Well right. accommodating. They have the they have the health and safety stuff. They have the contacts for for the police, fire, doctors, everything. So um, hopefully these types of units will not be too restricted in some of those areas where they don't want that kind of growth. So thank you. Correct. Um, okay. So overall, from staff's review of the changes, um, it's staff's opinion that the actual changes are relatively minor overall from the big picture. Staff has attended a couple of training seminars and is going to continue to do so. Um, as projects come into the city, um, s staff will typically sit down, um, come with either local architects, engineers, or uh, um, kind of designers to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, typically, the first couple of months, uh, there's probably more questions oftentimes. Um, and probably by the sixth month, at that point, a lot of people are, are going to have plenty of experience with the new building code. And again, it's not holistic changes. Rather, it's simply an update of the actual code. So with that being said, staff is recommending that the council in introduce the repealing and the reenacting of Title VII and appropriate chapters of the Yuba City Municipal Code titled Building Regulations and waive the first reading. And with that being said, this ordinance will be brought back to the City Council for formal action at your next meeting. And the the effective date of the ordinance will be on the 31st date after city council action, which again will be brought back to the city council, your very first meeting in January. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from council? Hmm. Uh, seeing none, looking for action. Move to approve. I'll second that. Okay, again, I'll first and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, uh, it's unanimous uh, decision. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I just wanted to uh, uh, note, as noted by Arnaldo uh, Rodriguez, that we do have our interim chief building official, Mike Campos, in the audience. Uh, Mike's been serving in that role since about July. Uh, Mike's been with the city how many years? 13 years. Uh, we're very fortunate to have him with us. Uh, he's been doing a very good job on the interim role, and uh, he'll be competing for the position as well. So awesome. just wanted to recognize him as being here this evening. Thank you. Thank you for catching that for us. Thank you.